In this screencast, we are going to be looking at labor unions, which for the factors market are known as bilateral monopsonies. So the whole thing about unions, right, they really have two goals. Their goals are to um, hire more workers, have the safe working environment, and then um, also to have a higher wage rate. So what we're really going to focus on here is about the workers that are being hired and the wage rate that they're getting paid. And so what happens is that you've got this monopsony, and we know how their wage rate and number of workers are hired, right? You go where MRC equals MRP, that you take that down, and that gives you the quantity of workers that is hired. You go down to the supply curve, and that will give you the wage rate that the monopsony is willing to pay. Well, what happens here with the monopsony, with the excuse me, with the unions in a monopsony, is that they all band together. Um, I always say, like, think of them like a band of brothers, where it's like an all or nothing here, and it's like everybody has to get paid the same amount. They don't want to lose the number of workers that are being hired. So their goal is not to um, have a higher wage rate, but they're willing to forego some of the people being hired there. And so this is how they can um, figure out their quantity is they use this quantity where MRC equals MRP within the monopsony. But because they are this band of all working together and it's like you either keep us all or you keep nobody, what ends up happening with them is that they end up having a perfectly elastic supply curve and where everybody gets paid the same exact amount. And so this is the wage rate and the amount of workers that they are trying to get hired. So you have the same number of workers as the monopsony, but you have a higher wage rate um, than you would with a monopsony. So what happens is that it goes into what is called arbitration. And arbitration is where you have a representative from the union, you have representatives from the monopsony, and then there's someone in the middle who's um, not supposed to have a bias towards either one, who's supposed to listen and who is supposed to come up with um, some agreements upon the wage rate. And so obviously the unions want it to be as high as it can be towards theirs, and the monopsony wants it to be um, lower towards their end. So usually what happens on a multiple choice question is it'll ask you where might the arbitrator um, determine it. And so obviously the answer is somewhere between the union wage rate and um, somewhere between the monopsony's wage rate. The economist, of course, would like them to choose this wage rate here at the um, market one of where supply and demand intersect. So a lot of times this is where we'll say the arbitrator will agree with because this is that perfectly competitive one um, that would seem the most fair. Is it a given? No. And so that's why they'll usually ask you a range. I have seen questions asked, though, about like what might um, be determined in order for quantity to be at, its, at the largest. And that would be, again, at this intersection here of supply and demand, because then this could be the quantity that could be hired at this wage rate. So you really have to look at how the questions are asked. But usually it's about what's the wage rate that the union's going to ask, which is where MRC equals MRP. And this time you're drawing that perfectly elastic um, supply curve there. Or they'll ask you what is the range that they're going to hire it at. Um, and again, they don't want to lose the quantity of the workers. And so that's how they come up with their determination for things.